is Wednesday again, then that means it is house tour day. Uh, let me put my tweet out. Last week I forgot, so I want to remember this week. Um, also, I want to mention a couple of reminders. Um, there is maintenance uh, today. Uh, it looks to be a long one. I think they mentioned something like five and a half hours. So if you're wanting to get some playtime in before that hits, you know, leave the stream and, and go play live and, and you can watch this later at your leisure. Um, don't want to take anyone away from their playtime. Um, I don't know if that means there's going to be some kind of a significant update or if they're just taking extra long for whatever. Uh, usually it's not so long, but five and a half hours is pretty pretty big, so hopefully something major. Um, also, um, there is the Starfall event to go ongoing for the entire month. Um, if you've missed the first couple of weeks, um, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> But there's still some chances to get some of the other login rewards. I think um, there's still a couple of days uh, for this week's one. Um, I'm trying to think what it was. Uh, I think it's some kind of a toy and maybe um, like a hood uh, transmog item kind of thing. Um, but in addition to that, they have some weekly events, and this one's is, the current one is the residential renovation. Um, I think, again, you have a couple of days for that. I think it runs till the 22nd. So if you haven't uh, had a chance to log in for that event, now is the time to do so. Um, I think I saw a tweet somewhere saying that they had actually included the Chromium the core as part of the reno residential renovation uh, rewards, but I have not been able to confirm that. I barely have time to come in and do the tour, so I don't really um, check out some of the, the things like I probably should, but um, hopefully uh, whatever rewards are being offered this month, um, you guys will enjoy them. I think um, there was some uh, Protostar and Osun stuff. Uh, that was announced on the uh, official uh, Wildstar Twitter feed. So I know there's some rewards or uh, offerings from the vendors, the event vendors that um, are there every month, and then there are others that are rotated out uh, every few months. So just be aware of that and uh, take advantage of having that. I don't know what next week's stuff will bring. I haven't looked at it. Um, but again, it's the last of the Starfall stuff, so if you want to, you know, get credit for it, log in. Make sure you log in. Um, also, uh, for those of you that join us every week, just a heads up that I will not be here next week. My son is going to be taking a trip to the States, um, and we'll be uh, up at the crack of dawn, or actually earlier than that, um, to make sure he gets to the airport uh, safely and on time and uh, we will be seeing him off and I'm assuming I will be like dead to the world after that um, because I'll be trying to catch up on the sleep that I lost. It's, I'm not a big fan of flying and even though it's not me going on the plane, it's still going to be concerning for me to have my kid going on. And I say kid, he's like 20 you know, plus, but um, it's still you know, mommy instinct kind of thing. I'm nervous about it, uh, not to mention the fact that he will be gone for about a month. So it's a kind of uh, a stressful time for me, and I just don't think I'll be up for streaming. Uh, even though I could probably force myself to be here, I just might be zombified. So I think it's better to just spare you guys from that. Um, so just a heads up, there will not be a stream for sure next week. Um, but we'll be back, hopefully, um, after that um, for continuing on with our adventures through housing. Uh, in the meantime, this week we have uh, two winter plots that I wanted to show you. Um, we are on Entity NA. Um, I don't get onto this side of uh, the Nexus uh, too often. It's just for the every other week that I come visiting. Um, but uh, there are some amazing builders. There's actually probably a bigger um, population as far as player-wise goes um, on NA side. Um, EU, uh, we, you know, 
give them a run for their money on the creativity parts, but um, there's definitely more houses and stuff to visit on this side of the, the pond, I think. Um, so it's, it's great that this year we were able to start bringing um, our viewers to that side of things. Um, I know there have been some uh, players in the past that have tried to do house tours. I think there's at least one more maybe that's been doing it, but I don't know um, if they've been live streaming. I think they just make videos from it and uh, ship it off to YouTube direct. But um, it's been kind of hit and miss. We've had some say we're going to do it and then they only do it for a few weeks and then they uh, slag off. So. I just wanted to uh, give equal opportunity to um, both sides of the pond and um, uh, now that we've started that it's been a, a, a great joy to be able to uh, view all of the different themes that we've been finding over here. So hopefully you guys will enjoy today's uh, viewing as well. Um, first we're starting out on uh, Daniil Korolev's plot, it's called The Burrow basically a winter plot. There's not snow falling, which is fine. Um, I think part of that might be because of the prefab home stuff that they've put out. Um, a lot of, again, we've talked about how um, weather uh, or uh, sky remodel uh, stuffs that have like um, elements like rain or uh, snow or um, uh, motes of dust and other kind of things that uh, that comes animated with some of the sky remodels. Uh, when you do a custom house uh, for the exterior, that stuff leaks, it bleeds right through the walls. So if you're inside a, a house, it could be snowing inside the house if you have snow uh, running uh, for the sky remodel. So it kind of throws off things. Um, we've seen a few like uh, not haunted mansions, but kind of like spooky, dark, kind of uh, emo-ish looking mansions and stuff. And they've had rain, uh, the rain sky remodel setting, and then you go into the house and it's still raining in the house. And it kind of feels a little odd. I mean, if you can look past it and just enjoy uh, the build itself, that's one thing. But it does kind of uh, throw things off a little bit to have the rain inside the house. So... Again, it's one of those things, if you can find a, a sky remodel that suits the mood or the theme of your plot without disrupting, um, it's, it's a judgment call as far as the builder goes on whether or not they decide to use one that actually has animated stuffs. Um, this one has chosen a snow uh, theme, but has opted not to use the falling snow sky. So it's more kind of like an overcast like it's on the verge of snowing and you can see that they've really gone out with trying to cover up the edges of the plot um, borders uh, to make it look like it's in a landscape of rolling snow covered uh, hills um, i think they're using uh, the bottoms possibly of some of the arctera formations i know those have some nice uh, shapes. I'm just going by some of the curviness and pointy bits um, that I see from some of the uh, edges. I suspect that's what it is, but I can't say for sure. I, I don't know um, for positive. I'm just going by gut instinct. Um, as you can tell uh, as well, they do have the uh, teleport pad covered up mostly. You can kind of see the sticks right there. Um, I think this is just a, a tilted upside down snowy hill and um, that's how you've got it kind of covered up. If I was to walk right where the shadow is, I'd pour it back out um, and everything. Uh, when you do zone into this place, you're basically, the snow is over your head. You have to hop up with your character to get on onto the surface. You actually zone in underneath or inside the snowy hill that's covering the, the teleport pad, but that's nothing serious as long as you don't get panicky when you come in. Okay, so we're going to take a, a little tour on the outside part and then we'll go to the interior. So I think this is kind of a farm theme. Uh, you'll see what I mean as we walk around. Like here you have a little corral for um, some of the critters that are housed here, specifically the Rouse Dowers. Again, if you don't have 
the actual NPCs. The rest are plushy, will work just as fine. Uh, obviously, they're not animated or anything, but you can get away with it. Um, that's how we've uh, done the, the critters for so long. It's not unusual to still see that. And not everybody can uh, get a hold of the NPC packs um, as readily as others. So don't feel bad if you have to use the, um, the plushies as like faux uh, NPC critters. Um, the little corral itself is basically just the um, wooden fences. And then the rock part here, I believe that's the upside down. Um, it's either a dragon or a pell um, fence post. It's got those nice brown rocks. We've seen some use that as actual like um, uh, mountainous areas. It's a different color stone. We don't have a lot of stones that are usually they're gray or sandstone or uh, obsidian rocks. Um, we don't really have a single set of just these kind of colors. Um, yes, you have the color shifting that can kind of give you a little leeway on that, but again, uh, the shapes are different and the, the markings, the, the striations and the stone and everything is, is different. So a lot of people like to use them for that kind of thing. Um, the ground here where it's a little muddy looking, that's again the upside down barnacle weed. It's the one that I call the chocolate or the candy decor because it looks like a, a little clump of like a chocolate candy. To me, at least, I've seen a few others use it in similar ways, but uh, a lot of people like to use it for mud puddles um, or just uh, dirt or earth for like uh, potted plants. Or you can see here where it's kind of like they've worn down where the snow is because of them uh, grazing or whatever. Over here. Again, they're using some of the actual NPCs, the Roan and uh, the Oxian and the Equivar. Um, if you don't have those, there are the corpses that you can use. They look a little weird at times because there are wounds in the, the corpses, but I've seen enough people use them in this way that it's doable if you are kind of sneaky about how you cover up the, the gaping wounds. Um, like I've used the Roan uh, corpse um, for a uh, pulling a cart on a, a little Easter plot, and I just used sandbags to cover up the sides to make it look like he was also carrying some packs. Um, so yeah, it's it's possible. Um, but probably the most important part of this is the little pin that the the builder has put together using decking pieces, uh, haystacks or hay piles. And then, of course, the uh, thorny logs. This little bit here, that's the uh, tribal mat. Um, again, that comes in two versions, the rolled and the flat. And it's from the Far Trader Fab Kit, I think is what it's called. It looks like an igloo kind of thing with the little lop bouncing around in front. And um, it's a limited item i think when you go and visit the vendor it says like it has one and you buy it out and then you think okay that's it but if you just wait a little bit it'll respawn an additional one so you can come back i don't know how long it takes or anything but it's, it's not too terribly long i don't think um and this little part here that's just a staircase landing Um, over here we have a little, like a coop kind of thing. You could probably easily convert this into a, like a chicken coop, add some shelves. Um, we've seen some use the hay pile upside down and it looks like little nests. And uh, some will use like the spider eggs or other things to make it look like the chickens have uh, laid eggs. Um, now the little fiery pit, I don't, I'm not sure what the purpose of that is, but it's, it's, uh, down here. I think it's the lop version one. You can see they've just kind of thrown in different parts. 
to kind of make it work. I mean, there's a lot of different fences here being used, the Orin version, the Protostar version, and then the regular wood fences. Over here we have uh, the greenhouse. And this appears to be a like, kind of like a rabbit hutch, but they got the jabbits inside there. Now again, it's the uh, same kind of uh, materials as the other pins, but they've added in the Osun um, grading here. Again, you can get this from the Arctera zone. And I believe it's relatively quick that you can obtain it. Um, like you only need friendly or such um, reputation for uh, acquiring this unlock. But again, you could turn this into a variety of like little hutches for different types of critters if you want. Okay, so inside the greenhouse, they're using a combination of, I want to say it might be, um, uh, as we've said before, the, um, the ground replicates what's down below. So I can't tell if there's actually maybe a possibly a, a garden fab kit set up here and they've just built over top of it or if um, the ground is actually dirt underneath and they've just kind of boxed it in to make it look like it's a, a, a garden fab kit kind of thing. Really hard to tell, but I think this is pure custom. Um, some of the, the dirt is sandbags to make it look like they've plowed it up and raised it up a little bit. Um, lots of goodies on the shelves. Again, these are all and placed each individual item a lot of time and care and and attention to detail as well like here with the calendars um, again it's the calendar with the pinup girl and they've just tilted it just enough to have the pinup part sunk inside so you only see the other part um, some of these vents i think that comes from the space chase stuff Um, some of the, the boxing is uh, pillars, and then you've got uh, some of the decking uh, railing, I think, is being used to box some of that in. Notice they've got here, um, it's not pumpkins, it's the actual, it's the hanging fruit, and they've just got some of it planted down here to make it look like um, a type of pumpkin or squashy looking thing. Um, and of course, these are being used like uh, either bean poles or bamboo. Um, for a water plot, this is great for looking like um, seaweed uh, forests, kelp forests, or however you want to say it. For most of the construction, I think it's um, uh, decking pieces, uh, pillars, and then the curved glass walls there, curved glass. I mean, notice there's no glass here, but it's kind of okay. You don't have, I've seen some that try to make greenhouses and they have to have it completely enclosed and they get kind of squirrely with it, but it's all right that it's not uh, perfect. Again, remember that the spade, depending on how you flip it over, it looks like a shovel type bit, or if you flip it the other way, it looks like a pitchfork kind of thing. 
just one of those items with the little quirky thing. Again, barnacle weeds. Um, they now have the cubic um, NPCs, so obviously they're using those. Um, but I have seen some use, I think there's some kind of an Ichthian cubic decor that some have used it in the past. Because uh, I don't even think we have a cubic plushie. Um, I'm not 100% on that, but I think it's pretty close that we don't. Um, but I think some have gotten away with using the Ichthian uh, decor. I don't know how easily that one is obtained, but uh, I have seen some use it. And I'm not talking about the Fab Kit one. There is a Fab Kit that's got cubics on it as well. But I think the Ichthian, I don't know, it's like a stack of three or something. And they just push it down and, and show the one. And that kind of works. Although it's got like some kind of a metal thing over its face, I think. Because it's like, I don't know, they're feeding it. Uh, forcefully or whatever, I'm, I'm not really sure. Notice, no matter how they've configured the little pins and stuff, it's all pretty much the same styling. Again, that helps tie it all in. It's kind of like your furniture for your, the interior of your house. If you have a lot of mix and match stuff, it looks okay but uh, when it's kind of more matchy matchy uh, or using the same materials at least in the same color scheme it looks uh, better coordinated I guess I believe this is supposed to be um, the outhouse kind of facility again just decking pieces a little bit of snow clumps thrown in to make it look like it's been snowed on. Um, got one of those lamps attached there. It's a simple, simple deal. Um, over here we have uh, one of the fab kits. Uh, I think it's the uh, the crash site where you uh, save or help uh, the survivors. And I want to say it's a daily, but I'm not positive. I think the Fab Kit is mostly this part here, and they've added some of the frozen water in and the ice-covered bits. But it fits nicely. They've done a good job of blending it in. Um, I'm not sure what all is here. I don't know if this is an actual fab kit thing or just something they put together. Um, I think the sparkles that looks like kind of like fireflies, I think that's the ends of um, sparking wires and they're just hidden it so you just see the spark. Um, and then uh, this bit here, I want to say it looks like the textures to um, Maybe some of the terminite mounds. I'm not really for positive on that. I have no idea the purpose of this, if it's supposed to be like some kind of like a little fairy ring or something, or a meteor crash and they wanted to make it look like that. I, I really don't know. I mean, you can see how the trees are bent over and there looks like some kind of an impression. And maybe this is the meteor and this is the dirt that's been raised out of it. But why they've done it, I have no idea. As for the glowy part, um, the only item I can think of that might have that effect is the uh, the frost skull. Um, and the size of it makes it seem like it might be really big and uh, they just sunk it down so you don't see the skull itself and you just see the, the animation. But again, I'm not for sure on that. And then, of course, the bones out here also come from Arctera. They like drop like candy, so there's no um, shortage of being able to acquire any number of different ones. And of course, 
above the entrance is the Arcura formation, which again leads me to suspect that that's also being used for the upside down part to make it look like the mountains in the distance or the rolling hills or however you want to say it. And then we've got the actual little farmhouse thing, which I think is the Dorbs. Again, it's mostly decking pieces, including the stairs, which is being used for the roof. Yes, there are some gaps to it. Um, but again, uh, if you're not persnickety about detail like that, this works just fine. Could be, uh, uh, they could have made this a barn or some such. There you go. Um, they've actually added some water to the water trough, just the waterfall that they've got, so it gives it a little motion. There is some actual like uh, uh, coloring of blue in the bottom of the water trough, but it's like a very pale and it doesn't move, of course. Um, but this works really good for that. And uh, I think this is one of those either spaceship parts or engines or generator things. Make it look like a generator for the house. The base of it, um, I want to say, is uh, I, I'm really not sure, to be honest. It looks like. Uh, some of that um, uh, the Dominion building block kind of stuff for the town, but uh, it's a different color, so I'm not really sure. Again, you can see it's pretty patchworked up just to get certain things covered. For the inside, got all the comforts of home, a little fire pit here. It's just some logs. Um, I think it's a Falcon um, fire pit thing. And then, of course, the little big on a poker there. Staircase landings for the little tool organizer. I think everything here is pretty straightforward. Two by fours for the shelves. Notice how they're sticking out the ends and then they're actually kind of making them seem purposeful that they did that um, to make it look like they're hanging their other utensils on there. Again, little shelves like this is a great way to kind of hide those odd and items that you're, you acquired, you want to show off, but uh, you're not quite positive about how to put it in. Now some of the wood behind here, it looks like they've added in the uh, picture portraits of the tree um, to give it a little different wood than um, this because the texture looks a little different. It'd be just my eyes, but that's what it looks like. And then of course, if you pop up to the upstairs, and that's where the actual like bedroom stuff is. Again, you've got another shelf, two by fours, staircase landings for that. Pretty straightforward on the items, not a whole lot of mystery on what's being used and what isn't. Hover park pieces to kind of finish off this little entranceway here. And last but not least, we've got this little cubby hole here. Now, this part here, I think, is the bottom of that um, stove thing. The, I think it's the stone one. I don't know if it's specifically lop or what, but I think it's the bottom of that. And uh, of course, the bridge, Orin Bridge, and then they've got uh, the Orin Landing here, and a couple other things, including the rock. Now, this is actually covering up 
but I believe is the bunker. Um, the entrance is down here somewhere. I don't know if there's actually part of it showing or if it's just kind of visible. Um, but they're kind of faking it in that there is a, a little uh, area here, uh, like a the house has been carved out of the stone kind of thing. So we're going to go inside. So there's another Orin door and a signal that's where we dropped in. A lot of decking pieces for the walkways and such. Um, the water is basically the waterfalls. I don't know if it's the upside down part that they're using, the bottom, or if it's just the top. I think both have a, a kind of a, some stuff. I think it's probably the top. And they just pushed it down so you just see um, that lovely animation. And it looks like they've got two or three in here uh, to kind of simulate this like little like interior lake pool kind of thing going on. Um, a lot of the green stuff that you see is a mix of like uh, the lily uh, leaf flowers. Um, there are some actual lily pads that come with the water uh, waterfall kit, including the little animated uh, dragonflies. Um, but the longer bits, those tendrils that you see, that's just um, overgrowth that's been upside down and the big bulky part of it is hidden down beneath. Works really well for like a a pond extra for the, the grasses. Um, over here you can see they're using the mossy overgrowth for the hangings on the walls. Um, this looks like uh, the Galeris walls, which might be what they're using for the base of the house. It kind of has that same color, doesn't it? Uh, these are just thinker heads, these big lumps of green and moss. Ruby eye thinker heads, you can craft them. Works great. Again, spring flowers, the teapot and uh, stuff, um, and some of the other goodies. Those all come from the spring decor pack. Uh, this stone here, that's the back side of the, I think it's the taurine figurehead. A lot of people like to use it for um, caves and stuff. I got the gnarled archway. And then they've got the drain hidden beneath the stone door, the taurine door. Um, these parts here uh, that kind of look like little bowls of uh, mossy grass or whatever, it's basically this plant. I forget what it's called, some kind of bush. Um, they just flipped it over. And it actually looks hollow inside on the bottom, which is kind of weird. But uh, I've seen some people use it kind of like for bowls um, or weird um, uh, lettuce things for their tacos and stuff. Nests as well um, for like uh, dinosaur bits. Uh, staircases for these little wall hangings for the the mossy trailings. Again, this is part of that spring decor fab kit bit. And this little walkway here is actually the top of the uh, squid uh, platform. 
and they've just turned it into kind of like a little uh, decking terrace kind of thing for a little overlook to the pond. Here's the main door. Now you can see there's they're using mostly um, granite style walls and lots of different kinds of glass bits to, to uh, liven it up. It makes it look more open. Let's just go down here first. Here's the kitchen. We'll take a look at that. We're just going to start on the end here. This is like the pantry. Um, I think this is one of the uh, rope bridges and they've just got it sunk in so you just see the bottom of it. And then, of course, two by fours for all the shelving. Uh, some of the cabinets are just um, wooden crates. And then they've got, it looks like the, uh, the water troughs. We're seeing the bottoms of it where the little handles are, or the legs, I guess is better. And then some of the cabinetry is the actual, like, fireworks crate, I think, or, or the... Um, explosives crate because uh, you got one that's kind of open that sort of thing then for the kitchen itself again you have those crates um, for the countertop, it's the uh, back side of, or not the back side, but the edges of the um, cellar entrance. It has that nice whitish brick. Uh, for the cutting board, it's basically the cheese block. It usually has a, a wedge of cheese on it. They've just flipped it over so that the cheese is hidden beneath, and you just see the back side of the, the cutting board. And again, using the corpses in this way is handy. It already looks like it's been slightly butchered, so you just kind of play along with that. Again, cheese board. And you can see the shape of the cheese, the shadow of it, I guess. Kind of weird. Uh, just a ship hand locker for the fridge. Very simple. Some get a little fancier using other materials, but this is perfect. Uh, they've actually added a handle. It's the handle of the vintage beer mug. Um, for the bowl of um, goodies here, uh, it looks like um, a sandstone covered with snow inside a hollow dome. And then for the stir, um, it's one of the white picket fence posts. Again, Two by fours, um, I think it's uh, exile floors, the uh, cellar entrance, everything nice and neat and tidy. Again, that's all individually placed. And, and notice how they just threw all their signs and stuff in. So it's it's kind of a fun way. It's almost like refrigerator magnets, but on the wall. You know, it's just a place to just dump them all. Um, the little rug here, uh, that's basically the tree table just sunk down so you just see the top. So it has that marquee of the, the butterflies and such. And then this little bit here with the cabinets and stuff, I think it was they just had this odd space where the staircase is, but they wanted some kind of shelving. So they just kind of punched in some uh, two by fours, made some shelves, and then added it in the um, uh, metal edge two by fours and blocks to make these little cabinet things uh, with uh, bottle tops for the drawer holders. I think these are files down here. Let's see, let's go here first. Here's the living room, and I presume this is to be the dining room section. Um, the piano, I don't think it's a flower original. 
Um, but it's still a very cleverly built piano. It's using two by fours mostly. Uh, for this little bit here, um, that's part of the uh, gear trophy. It's like the bottom of it where the little plaque is. Um, trying to get a better view of the keys and such. I think what they're using for the keys, both the, the white and the black ones, are um, fence posts, the white picket fence posts. And same way with the pedals down below. That is my best guess. For others that actually want some color differentiation, they use um, book, either the white pages part for the white keys and then um, black books for the black keys or dark blue um, if you can't go particularly black, but uh, looks great. Um, not as complicated as some of the pianos we've seen. Um, again, the, how you far you go in the detail is just up to the builder and how much space they have, uh, decor space. Um, this here with the uh, bars, um, those are actually just, I think, the edges of the glass panes. You can see how it's pretty light here but more frosted as you go and I think that's just because the glass is overlaid the more layers there are to it the frostier or more uh, opaque it becomes um, if you like level it up to like 24 layers it'll be like a perfectly white solid white canvas um, we've used that with painting kind of things in the past but kind of gives you a good example of it's almost gradiated um, how it's been set in, but that's how they're getting these bars. It's just the edge of the framed glass, and then there's just multiples of them layered on top of each other. Same way here, just multiples of them to get that weird trimming. Um, this part, I think, is um, actually uh, the wall-mounted generators. I think that's part of it, and they just got it to kind of Bring it along there and then of course layered glass again and glass to kind of bring out this weird little pattern uh, for the fireplace it's basically the archway but multiples of them to give that thickness and it's the exile um, holographic fireplace it's the one with all the gaudy blue Again, I say typically if we see that being used, most often they've covered up all of that blue um, to uh, make it blend a little better with the scenery of the house itself. Um, yes, if they wanted to throw in some more details, I'm sure they could add some, uh, some kind of a shield kind of thing or crossed uh, weapons or candles and all sorts of things. I mean, for if you wanted to decorate this place up for the holidays, the tree could go here in the corner and have like a wreath and some gifts and, and all sorts of goodies. But um, you can see there's a lot of potential to personalize it if you want to go that far. And then, of course, they added some little drawers. Again, it's the metal edge two by fours and blocks with the bottle tops or the pullers of the drawers. Um, here you could add some pillows, make a reading nook, or um, put some uh, bookshelves and uh, have a little mini library there. Great place for some portraits or uh, shelving to display all your little doodads that you've collected. Upstairs, again, Layered glass. This room first. Here's the bathroom. Um, there's a shower. Um, they're using that, uh, I forget what that thing is called. It's some kind of like a weird little crane thing. Um, it's like a heavy equipment with the cab and the wheels and everything. It's a daily login reward, and uh, 
they've just got it hidden inside the wall so you just see the crane part where it looks like it's like a alien spaceship zapping something up um, but they're using it as the shower head which i think is clever i, I want to say we've seen one other uh, person do that but uh, i'm not for positive on that um the lever for the control for the shower you've got um, it looks like some engine parts for the uh, faucet handles others use you know, i mean you can use about anything uh, two cups uh, bottle tops all that kind of stuff um, this part here for the faucet bit, I think, is part of the Chua Sipper Cup, I think. Uh, I've used it for sink kind of setups, not the shower area. And then, of course, um, uh, hover part pieces for part of the seating area. Some people go through the trouble of actually putting things on the shelves inside this particular item. Not required, but something some folks do. Again, layered framed glass. We've got a little bedroom here set up. Looks like the white uh, drapes have been recolored to a blue to match the bed covering. Just the regular bed and then they've just sunk it in so you don't see the, the four posts. Ouch. For a little hat rack, it's basically another one of those fence posts. I've seen some use like the head busts as well for that uh, setup. Uh, this way we have the library. Again, it's just the same bookshelf over and over, and they've encased it in two by fours. Again, we've seen others do it. Some will do that even in the divider part to just kind of make it look a little cleaner. It just hides the, the shelf itself. Um, here's that new jukebox decor. This came from... Uh, the second week, I think, of the Starfall event this year. As long as you logged in, you get a anniversary jukebox. I don't have my sound on, so I don't know what music it's playing, but I know, um, I think it was Das Moose that uh, put out a video that covers all of the music that comes with it. Um, up until we had this actual decor item, we've had a lot of builders create their own jukeboxes, myself included. And uh, personally, while it's fun that this is animated and that it has music and stuff, um, I take greater pride and enjoyment out of seeing others construct their own out of the given materials. Um, you can see that they've kind of been uh, inspired by the look of it. Um, we've seen some use like the, um, the soul frost tubing and uh, neon signs and other sorts of items to create their own. And, Again, while the standalone item is fantastic and it's a great addition to all of the other materials we have, um, I personally prefer the custom built ones to that one. Um, again, layered glass patterns, um, some framed, some unframed to give this lovely look to this entrance here or exit, however you want to look at it. And I assume this was intended to be, um, I'm really not sure. This looks like a, a multiple living space, like maybe a bunker house. Um, maybe it was intended as a guest room kind of thing. Um, but I like how they've turned this one into kind of like a draftsman table. 
So they're using the uh, tribal mats as kind of like parchment for their their build, for their design, and then turn the medical tables into a drafts board. Now remember the medical tables, there's two versions on the vendor. Um, one's more expensive than the other, so make sure you're aiming for the, the cheaper one. I think there's one like 50 silver and then the other one's like four gold. So it's kind of a duh kind of thing if you're going to go for the cheaper. Uh, I think I got stuck in the, the curtain. <laughs> Of course, a lot of people like to use these um, uh, weapons crates for refrigerators. Um, we've seen some use them as actual sleeping bunkers. Um, they've like oversized them and added in beds and things and stuff. It was really clever. Again, using these tuba boards to make simple shelves in whatever space is given, you can see how easily that's done. They could add more vertical ones to box it in even more. Um, but this leaves it open for longer items. Uh, last but not least is the treasure room. Again, it's a great place to sneak in those items that you have no idea where to where else to put them. So you see that in addition to the actual treasure pile decor, it's repeated multiple times. They've added in extra things like some of the Elden goodies and uh, the chests and such. So that is uh, Daniel Korolev's place. We've got one other um, plot that I'd like to visit today before we close it up. Take a last look outside. Okay, so um, that was the burrow. Let's head over to Ona Worm Curse's plot. This is also a snowy plot, um, but if I recall correctly, they actually have snow falling. Kind of a long teleport. Again, I think that's partly due to the community's system being input. It seemed to me that once that went live, that the lag between plots uh, zoning in and out became longer. So now in the past, you've seen where I've used the green uh, bramble bushes um, oversized to make it look like forests. It works fantastically. I think I have it on my Pokemon plot and everything. I use it in a lot of different ways. Um, this one has used the same idea, but they're using the frosted version, the winter version of that particular bramble. And it works great. It's like a snowy winter forest. Um, obviously, the snow is falling, or whatever this stuff is, a little moat junk. Um, and it gives you, they, they leave you a specific path to walk down. Um, they throw in little bits, like the snow-covered um, flowers and snow-covered stones. But pretty much, you're just, you're given a specific route. And this is one of those tricks to use um, if you... Uh, don't want your visitors wandering off the path. You you focus them in. This also helps if you have a, a particular vista that you want your, your visitors to see and maybe the items that you're using to build the house or whatever it is. From a distance, maybe some of them disappear. I've had that problem with some of the buildings I've created. Um, and you have to force your visitor to come a little closer so that when they first see it, they see all of it. So it's not missing pieces. Um, this is a great way to do that, to kind of box it in, force them to walk a certain path. And um, then there's no getting lost. They kindly uh, light it up with little um, lamp posts.
as I come through here visiting earlier, I was like trying to make sure I wasn't missing any kind of little weirdness. Yeah, I think this is the Far Trader Fab Kit. This is the one that you can come and purchase um, the tribal mats. Yeah, it's like, it says limit one, but again, if you come and, and visit later, it'll be respawned in there. So it's nicely blended in, you know, because it's a wintry kind of deal. And then here they've got the snow blocks, kind of like little, like a little stone path, and they've just recolored them and resized them to make it an interesting little clue that there's something here for you to look at. And basically it's just a little landing pad to kind of see the scenery. Obviously there's the honeycomb uh, border that's popping up the closer you get to it. Um, if you go up a certain height it actually stops and you don't see that so some like to really elevate their plots so that you can take advantage of that little blip but um, if you can kind of look past it then uh, it's not such a bad thing. Excuse me. Yes, I still have the cough thing. Extremely annoying. That's all I can say. Okay, here um, they've gone really crazy with the uh, snow blocks and the snow clumps. The clumps are forming the entrance here to this like little uh, hobbit house kind of thing. They've got some of the night lights uh, or night lights snuck in. Um, no clumps galore. I don't know what's making up the biggest portion of this. I want to say it's one of the um, either the purple rock arch or possibly um, one of the I honestly don't know what that is. But it works out great. They've got the little uh, lop snowman. They've just added some bows and hats to it to dress it up a little bit. Um, here's two by fours. The welcome mat is, of course, the Orin uh, desk. It's just pushed down, uh, lined with uh, thorny logs here. And then we come into this little cabin thing. Oops, I need to open that one. I need to close that one. <laughs> Go over here first. So again, thorny logs making up the interior of the walls. Lots and lots of pillows here. You've got the uh, mattresses. They've got several of them together to make this little sectional type thing. Two by fours for all the shelving. And then look at all the books. Now all of these are individually placed. The time and effort is ridiculous. Um, they've added um, covers uh, to these books. Um, I think it's the grimoires, and they've just smushed it in a little bit so it's not so thick, and then added the different um, stained glass windows to the fronts to dress them up a little bit. Some people like using the um, travel posters as book covers, so it works out really nice. Hi, Ida. Glad you could come. Uh, let's see. Uh, for the rug here, it's the uh, carrot rug. It's just kind of half covered. <coughs> for the TV and game console area, you've got um, Hoogle portraits for the framework around the Chumbacombra busts. Uh, various colored Orin floors to kind of dress it up. They just color shifted a bunch of that. Uh, bottles, bottle tops for the handles here. And uh, for the, the PlayStation or whatever that's supposed to be, I think it's a suitcase with the hanging cables and then just um, the controllers on there. 
others get a little fancier. We've actually saw one, I think it was a few weeks ago, we saw one that had like the PlayStation um, logo on the TV and then had like the actual little controllers and with the buttons and everything. And it looked fancy, but again, um, depending on your decor limits and how much detail you're putting in everywhere else, I mean, think of all the books that's been placed on these shelves. Um, you may not have the uh, the indulgence to be able to use multiple pieces for just one little controller using the control panel works just as well. Um, again, uh, this shows you that a Winterfest item like the uh, Winterfest fireplace isn't just for Winterfest. It blends in very naturally here with all this bright colored um, pillow setup with all of the hanging lights. Um, the heart lamp, ta uh, table lamp, heart table lamp, heart themed, something like that. <laughs> Again, all these books are individually stuck in. You know, they've made some things look a little different just to kind of liven it up. So it's not just plain, straight up, you know, color shifted here, flip some over upside down, lean some of them over, made some of them smaller. It works really good. There's a little indoor garden area, very bright. They've color shifted some of the decking pieces to a green. They've added a lot of overgrowth along the walls. Um, uh, just about every flower you can think of is in here. I think the teal plants and um, the uh, tall finger flowers, um, a lot of uh, celestial, uh, celestial looking plants with the ivies and the there's just all sorts here. I can't even begin to name all of them. Um, some of the walls are lined with um, oversized uh, stained glass windows. Got some uh, Hugel statues. Um, the ore and landing above and below. Again, lots and lots of pillows. I guess this is someone's bedroom because there's a bed here. <laughs> they are one with nature for sure. And it shows you here um, with these like spooky lamps. Um, you usually see these like on Shade Eve plots because of the green and the dark. And they've basically found a way to put this into this brightly colored orany themed room and it goes very well. You don't even notice that it's typically a, a Shades Eve kind of look or a Draken kind of uh, themed item. Uh, for the little uh, dirt walkway, I think it's sandbags. Um, and here is the bathroom. Take a look. There's a lot going on in here. I think this is supposed to be the shower and it's one of those that has the hose and you like run it over yourself. Um, Cause this is like the oral, uh, oral, um, Oren uh, floral pillar thingy. And again, I think it's one of those that has two versions on the housing a vendor and uh, I think they're different prices so again check that um, but then it's got the hanging cable uh, down below they've got some different things um, like I think this is supposed to be a sponge it looks like a color shifted um, wedge of ch cheddar cheese or something Swiss cheese uh, for the wallpaper here, um, those are the um, uh, the heart themed coffee table. The one I call the butterfly table because the shape of it, you just push it just in enough where just the, the butterfly shape uh, shows up. So they've color shifted the walls and then thrown in the table as well. 
and color shifted it because I think it's typically blue. Um, here, again, they've played around with some of the, uh, I think it's like either the picket fences or maybe the um, uh, trellises and they recolored it to match the other wall bits here. Just like this is usually kind of a yellow, I think, yellow and green, and they've shifted it to a blue. And they've actually filled in some of the shelves with books and such. Notice they didn't put any uh, towel hangers. Some will use like pillars or um, hammers or other things to make it look like the towel is actually hanging, but it's not required. Um, here they gave a toilet paper hanger. Um, it's just a, a part of a board and fence post, I think. For the toilet itself, um, it's an orange chair. That's part of it here as well. It's, they've got the back covered up with an orange window. They've added a cylinder on the bottom. Again, color shifting them to match you know, the pinks of it. Um, the back part um, where the water tank is, I think that's an orange uh, dresser. And then another tube part for the little connector between the tank and the stool itself. For the cabinetry for the sinks, um, it's basically just a stack of the Orin desks or tables. Um, for the waste basket, it's just the feeding trough for that. And of course, windows for the mirrors. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey Kim, uh, I'm glad you guys are watching it. And yeah, I'm not on as often as I used to be, um, which is unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. Um, but I appreciate you guys um, uh, enjoying the video still, and uh, I'm happy to tour um, these places. Uh, I don't know which ones were yours, but um, it's always a pleasure. I, I am so thankful that um, the majority of builders leave their places open to the public or at least open them to the public when they're done um, because it really gives us an opportunity to be inspired by their creativity. Um, there's just so many, I mean, even after all these years uh, going through these houses and stuff and, and literally the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes that we visited, there's always something new and interesting uh, in how people put objects together to make other things. And you're thinking, why didn't I think of that? And it's an item that's probably been there from the beginning, but they still use it in, um, clever ways. It's always something new. Uh, so yeah, I love doing this and I hope to continue and hope people continue to enjoy them. So here we have uh, the kitchen and a little, I guess it's a dining breakfast nook kind of thing. Um, this is actually the brown table. <coughs> I think it's the one you get for um, like getting introduced to housing to have like a couple of builder kits and it's usually a table with it. Uh, again, it's the one with the really long uh, table legs, and most of the time people push it into the floor, so you can't see the really long bits. Um, for the table topper, it's just another one of those um, or in landing pads, and then they've got the um, heart-themed uh, like side table sunk in there for like a little, I don't know, put your candle there or your flower there or whatever. Again, thorny logs for most of it. Some of it's decking pieces. Down here you have ore and floors that's been recolored. Um, for this little uh, raised area for the kitchen, um, there's uh, the uh, ore and dressers. Over here, it's more decking pieces, I think. Um, this is a combination of, I think it's uh, two by fours laid over top of the um, wire fencing, either protostar gates or something like that. And then um, they've added in the uh, small trellis. Uh, it has those little gourd things on there. Uh, for the refrigerator, they're actually using uh, decking pieces, some of it recolored. And then the, 
the Drake indoors. I guess it's the oven. Look at there. Got some bread baking. It's basically just um, multiple sliced bread stuck together. Some of us will actually like resize the ends to make them look so it looks a little tapered, like a like a homemade loaf rather than one that's been manufactured. Um, for the grill, I think it's uh, grated shelves um, and uh, for the platter or the baking pan, it's uh, the back side of a travel poster. Um, I'm not sure what they're using for the hamburger. I guess it's hamburgers. Maybe it's supposed to be cookies. It looks like raw meat to me. I think it's a uh, Draken themed domes that's been recolored to a red. If I'm not mistaken. And I can't seem to get this one to open. It doesn't want to open it. Maybe if I hop up here. No, it won't let me. So, unfortunate. I don't know if it's meant to be, and I just can't get it to. He's telling me I must be within line of sight. It's something to do with how you position it, because like I know some players like to use their doors upside down, and it kind of can throw things off. Uh, oh, jumping and stuff doesn't work. Cause maybe if I land on the. Now um, keeps telling me the line of sight thing, but I don't know. Can't see if there's something actually up there. Anyway, um, for this cabinetry, again, it's the uh, coffee tables or the desks, I think, or in desks. And then it's um, decking pieces. And then over top of that is the tree portraits, the backside. We've talked about it before. It has that really nice... Um, grain of wood uh, texture um, and then they've color shifted it just to kind of you know jazz it up it's not gaudily done it matches the interior of the home nicely um, and then it looks like files it's all files for the handles on all of those drawers or cabinets um, this part here with the shelving that's part of the uh, filled bar it come, there's like two different ones. There's one that comes with no drinks on it or bottles, and the other one has it. And they've ta taken the one that has it and uh, may or may not have added a few bottles and plants of their own just to kind of jazz it up a little bit. And like here, they've added in some of those orange dressers again, same thing that they use down below um, to make it look like little spice cabinets or something. <clears throat> Uh, got an actual little stove here. We saw someone, I think it was either last week or the week before, that used this part to really jazz up their kitchen area nicely. Again, uh, the heart-themed table. Just push down so it makes it look like a little tray. Over here you have an inset. Uh, I don't know what kind of layering they did to get this all set in, but if you're wanting something actually inset for like a sink or something, it takes a lot of planning to kind of figure out what you're going to use. Um, not exactly easy, but they did a good job of covering it up. So just a bowl. I don't know what they're using for the water. It could be just some layered glass. It could be a, a, uh, an ice block um, of some sort. Um, for the faucet here, it looks like they're using, again, that Orin floral pillar thing. Um, some hammers and another dresser. Trying to see if there's anything else. Again, the same table is being used here, but they've just pushed it down so you just see the, the butterfly pattern again, even in its blue, so it looks like a little floor mat. Um, this shelf here, again, um, decking pieces, uh, orange floors, 2x4s. I think this is the exit. Oh, no, that's the pantry, I guess. Again, icicle stuffs, um, snow uh, clumps. Um, to get the like multiple hot dogs, it's the um, 
uh, it's like the shish kebab thing. It has like lots of different meats on it. And I think the hot dog is like the very tip top. And they just <laughs> multiplied it to make it look like a stack of sausages or whatever. Um, boardwalk pieces for the shelves here. Again, the same hanging fruit, but you know, color shifted. And then this, I think, is just the marauder berries. They actually come purple. Okay. Anything else? That's the exit there. Okay, so I think that's all the lower floor. Now we've got the upper floor to watch out. Uh, notice how they color shifted uh, these 2 by 4 blocks just to make it like a rainbow staircase thing. Again, uh, you would think all these multiple colors would just be just clashing to your eye. It's really not that bad. They're pastel -y and they go with everything else, so it works out okay. Um, here's a little reading nook. Again, they color shifted uh, the the tiles for the floor to just notice they didn't color shift all of them, just intermittent ones. Again, just a little bit of color shifting here, not the whole place, just this little bit for the little library nook. And then a massive um, bedroom, cozy lounge place. Um, these are all the, I think it's the uh, Orin beds. And it, it's become like a pattern for the wall. So these are actually the pillows. You know, the bed is like upside down, basically, here. Same way with this. I think that's the bottom trim of the bed. And then they've uh, patterned the roof with the um, tribal mat and then lined the bottom with all of the pillows here. Looks very cushiony. Not like a padded room in an asylum or something. Usually people just use the, uh, the mattresses for that. Okay, so that is that. And that's just, this is still all exterior for this build. We haven't gotten to the interior yet. It's just a little, little nook that they put together. And then, of course, the path is the uh, snow blocks. Just look at how many are being used for this lovely little whiny path. Um, here's somebody's sled that they made. It's just two by fours with the Orin fencing for the little bracketry there. Simple but cute. You know what it is, and it works really nice. Um, some of us, including myself, have gone through the trouble of actually trying to make like little tracks. Um, you can play around with different things like the edges of the knives or um, like the edges of the metal table works really good. Okay, so into the actual interior house. And what a massive use of this space. It's like this huge library. It's the same shelf over and over but they've made it look um fantastic in here again it's being trimmed by all of this this um two by four wood bits and then jazz it up with uh, hugo portraits and orin windows to just really it looks cozy and welcoming and just absolutely fantastic it's one of my favorite library builds i think We've seen several, and this is probably one of the best ones, in my opinion. Um, 
Now, this particular Orin house has those curvy uh, floors. It's kind of uh, tiered. And a lot of people find it awkward um, to build with or around. A lot of us cover it up because they find it annoying or they level it up. This one's left it and just kind of played into it by using all the pillows um, to kind of uh, blend it in. Now you'll see that there's um, different kinds of cushions, like they've got the uh, exile rug here. Um, but probably the most ingenious thing, and some people might not even really take note of it, is the tables. Um, they're just upside down cupcakes. The anniversary cupcake that we get with the Starfall celebration stuff. Um, they've just used that as the, it looks perfect. It, this could be used for like a gypsy hut. Put that crystal ball in the middle and you got an instant, you know, little jazzed up thing. Restaurants could use them. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, granted, I think you only get a certain, I think they're like, um, you only get the one every year. So you have to have, you know, been with Wildstar for a while to have this many. But, because uh, I, I can't remember if it's something that you can get multiples of or not. Uh, but yeah, it, it looks like you can because they've got like five here. So, but how awesome is that? It's simple. It looks like a, a tablecloth draped over the table. Elegant looking. And they're able, you're able to color shift it to whatever you want. Um, so yeah, I think that's awesome. It's a, a great use. Yes, if you hover over it, it lights up. Um, because it is an interactable item. Um, she saw fireworks or something, but I, I think this adorbs um, how they managed to use it in this in this fashion. Um, notice the book here. They've actually put some markings on it. I don't know if this is supposed to be the letter Z or if it's just about bananas or what, but it's like a an upside down dome or a hollow cylinder with two by fours and a banana. I am sure that probably means something to the builder, but I have no idea. Just thought it was kind of odd. Um, the Oren sconces are being used kind of like votive candle type things for the tabletops. Adds a little touch of light in this otherwise kind of darkened room. Um, layered orange windows just for the topping here. But see how well the, the bookshelves just kind of blend into the room. It's not overly done. It's just, I don't know, it just looks fantastic to me. I love this, this room. I could picture this in like uh, like a Harry Potter style and have some floating candles and, and stuff in here. So it kind of reminds me of that. That feel, kind of like a wizard's, you know, because I mean, how else are they going to get to the books way up here without having some kind of like levitation kind of thing going on? I mean, you don't see any ladder type things built up or anything. Again, uh, Orin windows, this one's been color shifted a little bit. Now, typically, a lot of us ignore the tunnel that goes down to the, the uh, room down below. Uh, but this one's actually gone uh, above and beyond as far as trying to utilize that space that the tunnel provides. So they've added in this little extra reading nook area. Um, these are the back sides of the heart collection chair goes along with the table and everything. Um, more pillows. You've got some of the mossy overgrowth bringing some of the, uh, the roots that they've got growing in here. Everything looks really comfy. I mean, who wouldn't want to sit up in this place? For the actual tunnel leading down, um, it looks kind of like a waterfall. Now, um, I get that the animation is kind of running backwards in my head. If it was like a water flow, I would want it to be going moving the other way. Um, but if you're wondering what this item is, it's actually the, I think it's called the um, infused habanero bloom. It's 
I think it comes yellow originally, and they color shifted it to a blue. But it's one of those, it looks like a, a bulb kind of thing, and it moves a little bit. But the roots um, have this animation going on. And we've seen others use it for like rivers and uh, things like that. Um, but uh, again, the only thing that kind of runs a little differently for me is I would expect the water movement to be the other way. But it could be that just to, due to the shape of it and how they wanted to use it in this space that there, it didn't work right for the shape and things that were poking out that shouldn't be. Um, and this was the only way they could get it to work and just expect you to ignore the direction of the water flow. But um, there you go. Um, so yeah, lots of flowers and, and uh, tree roots and things. Here's another one. This one's been purple and that one's blue. Again, they're all moving up, which is weird. I think this one, this one here is part of that green, orany, celestion, tree clumpy thing. There's regular overgrowth. There's, uh, there's just all number of plants out here. Um, these little shelf spacings, um, part of that is the apple cart. That's where you get the apples and stuff from. You can see some of them here. It's the same item. It's just they've chosen to sink some of it down and some of it in and. So you've got the wheel to the cart here, but they've chosen to cover it up on this one. But that's where you're getting these nice little uh, awnings or whatever you want to call them. Uh, this here is part of the... Uh, it's either a bookcase or a trophy case or something like that. It's the really tall one, and they've just flipped it upside down and pushed it down so you just see the very bottom. Um, I think it's the one that's not filled with stuff. There's like an empty one and then there's one that's filled. The filled one will have, um, the bottom doors will be open and they'll have a bunch of uh, like uh, scrolls and stuff sticking out of it. <clears throat> now this I thought was clever. These look like um, strange little like perfume vials or something or um, vials of, um, I don't know, sausage or something. This is actually the, I think it's the ornate orange pillar. It's the one with the little bit of green on top um, uh, that we saw using for the roof of the house a few weeks ago, I think. Um, it's long and, and kind of like really fancy looking because, you know, they call it orn ornate. But they're just showing the bottom of it because it kind of has a little bit of a heart shape to it. And so it looks like some files of some kind of uh, goodies which I thought was an interesting use of that particular item. Uh, again here, notice they're using the bar again with the drinks, but they just pushed it in just enough where you just see a little bit of it. Again, some of that infused habanero. Lots of files here, some of them color shifted and bottles. Um, the heart uh, themed uh, coffee table. Overgrowth, some of it recolored, so it looks like a little bit of uh, like a grapevine, a purple vine. Um, this is actually an item that comes as is. It's the arcade games. So There's like two versions. And then there's a lot of different like individual signs that you can get. Um, I didn't get a hold of one of these, I don't think. I got some of the signs uh, off the auction house, but just something for you to play around with, I guess. Um, tree tables, uh, picnic table here, orange shelves, um, the heart table, side table thing, um, dressers. 2 by 4 it looks like, and just filled with lots of stuff. Got a little bit of everything. Again, this is the kind of room where you can kind of sneak in stuff that you might normally 
wouldn't be able to sneak in and otherwise. I mean, like, who would put a frozen skull somewhere here or some fruit there? There's some bombs and stuff. It's just some weird placement of things. But again, it's one of those deals. I mean, here's a chandelier that's been pushed down and then they've thrown in the uh, the disco ball, strangely. So I don't know if this is supposed to be a crystal ball that uh, somebody's using to look or what. I don't know. Why the por portrait is upside down on the hoogle, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's like an eclectic collection of doodads. Um, it's like a, an organized chaos space right here. As we continue down, again, more goodies, more greenery. And then we come into this very jungly feeling uh, bedroom. Uh, it's orange landing pad for the base of it. Um, or in gates for the entrance here. Looks like there's two sets. Uh, all of those uh, weeping cups for the flowers up above. They've got the ritualistic um, candle circle. That's what's giving that kind of glow in addition to the glow that comes off of the lop shrines that they have around here. So it's very nicely lit up, but it has that pulsing come and go kind of feel. There's um, space sweet, there's uh, the purple, um, I call it the Dr. Seuss bushes because they're kind of curly and everything. I made like palm trees out of them once. It was really weird. Um, there's overgrowth for most of the wall. And I think um, trellises for part of it. Um, that's where you're getting some of that sneaking in some of the wood and stuff. And then they've got a lot of those like dream catcher um, poles lined as well. Notice how the wind is kind of having a heyday with the things that move. You see it kind of every now and then. It's You're wondering where the breeze is coming from. Got a couple of the hookahs in there. Various lamps. Again, I couldn't name all of the plants that are in here. There's so many different things. But again, if you have a large gathering of greenery uh, with the color shifting, it's easier to blend them in as well. It's not. I'm not saying that's what they've done here. Looks like they've left most of the stuff pretty much what they were. But if you're looking for like a, a particular color theme, it's easy to kind of switch around some of that if you have the the coins or whatever to to um, shift them over if you want more of a overall blue look or purple really easy to do but this is this is uh, very cozy I mean even with this um, like Draken themed bed it looks very orany in here and a nice use of the space I know there's some builders that probably would have added in another level in here somehow, um, but this works really nice for like a, a personal bedroom. Just you just pick out all the different like the blooming pollen plants. There's I think these are those purple bush trees, and I think these purple flowers here come from the tentacle plant. Like that one there. And again, a lot of these come from completely different zones. You got the far side plants. I see some Celestion stuff. I wouldn't doubt there's some desert plants in here too. But yeah. Really nice room. I, I think any Orin would uh, adore having a space like that to snooze in. And get out of here safely. Keep getting caught on the roots and stuff. There we go. So yeah, that is all for 
A Snow Root Retreat by um, Oh No Worm Curse. Kind of a strange name. But awesome build. And I hope you guys um, enjoyed both places. Uh, again, they're both winter uh, type plots, but they're just handled differently. Uh, one is more kind of an enclosed forest that leads to an interior um, with the library and everything. And the other one's more like a, a little farming homestead uh, kind of deal uh, with the house underneath the ground. So yeah, um, that's going to be it for today, guys. Um, again, reminder, I will not be uh, here next week. Um, again, I will be taking my son to the airport for his uh, month-long vacation in the States. So um, I'm probably going to be like short on sleep while I'm worrying about him flying in the plane because, again, I'm not a big fan of uh, flying. Um, so, yeah, uh, hopefully we will be back the following week. Um, in the meantime, I hope you guys have uh, fun with whatever projects you're working on. Again, we're always open to suggestions. If you know of a plot that we have yet to visit, whether it be an individual plot or a community, um, happy to hear from you um, for your suggestions of places that deserve um, a look here on our show. Um, again, thank you to those that have been continuing to visit us in the live chat and um, uh, enjoying the videos and stuff. We appreciate your support. Uh, wouldn't be continuing if it wasn't something that uh, folks at least somewhat enjoy. So um, I appreciate uh, the enthusiasm and uh, ongoing uh, conversations that we get to have. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the tours. Um, have a, a great week, weekend, and next week. Um, don't forget the Starfall event is still ongoing. Be sure to get in on that when you can if you can and um and of course we've got a couple more days of the residential renovation to enjoy so uh, dig in on that as well um till then i hope you guys have a safe time and uh, i'll see you guys later bye bye <laughs>